For me, growing up, one of the biggest mysteries I would think about on a regular basis was the idea of outer space. I would sit outside, I'd look up at the night sky, and I'd wonder, what else is out there beyond what we know? Playing Pokemon games, I'd come across many instances where space seemed to play an important role in the world with locations like the Moss Deep City Space Center, where I would hear rumors of a spaceship taking off in the near future, or the strange meteorites scattered around Veilstone City, which- <laughs> By the way, I could never figure out what I was supposed to do with them when I was a kid. I mean, oh my god, like I would spend hours running around talking to NPCs, bringing different Pokemon to the meteorites, and I could just, my little silly kid brain could never figure out what to do with them until, I guess many years later now. <laughs> Meteor, I hardly know her. There are even a handful of Pokemon that are closely related to space that piqued my interest even more. Like the Clefairy on Mount Moon who secretly gather during the quiet hours of the night to draw power from the moon. Or Staryu and Starmie being Pokemon born from bits of stardust that fall into the sea. It is also said that Lunatone and Solrock were found at the site of a meteor strike in Hoenn. And even the legendary Pokemon Eternatus emerged from the inside of a meteorite that crashed into Galar thousands of years ago. One thing that all these Pokemon from space have in common is that they are all shrouded in mystery. There is always something a little strange about them that sets them apart from other Pokemon, since there is always something we don't quite fully understand about them. And there is no other Pokemon from space with greater mystery and a strange origin than the DNA Pokemon itself! Deoxys! <laughs> Said to have been born from a mutated alien virus found in a meteor that crashed on Earth, Deoxys has immensely strong psychic powers and is capable of altering its cellular structure. Thanks to this power, it is able to transform itself into three different forms suited for battle, attack form, defense form, and speed form. Being categorized as a mythical Pokemon, sightings of it are incredibly rare, and not much is known about it outside its origin and base capabilities. For instance, how and why is it able to change its form so easily? What threat would possibly require Deoxys to need the ability to strengthen itself in such a way? How far in the depths of space did it even come from? And what makes the meteorite sitting around a Veilstone city capable of changing its form? And like, why does it have so much beef with Rayquaza? Like, in every instance you see them, in the anime, in the manga, in the, even the, its own movie, it's- they're always at each other's throats, like, Rayquaza is like, I hate you, man, and Deoxys is like, dude, I just fell into the atmosphere. I don't know what to do. Uh, is someone help? My boy Deoxys can never catch a break, basically. <laughs> I found myself thinking about this strange Pokemon more and more over the years, until I finally decided it was time to get my hands on this alien and see what it was actually capable of for myself. However, Deoxys normally can't be obtained in Ruby and Sapphire, but I was able to. And I found it shiny using one of the most forgotten pieces of Pokemon history, the e-reader. Ta-da! Okay, so do you remember when you were a kid and like your mom or your dad would take you to Toys R Us or GameStop with your copy of Black and White or Diamond and Pearl and to go download some random event? Well, the e-reader is kind of like that, but not really. Let me explain. <laughs> With the old mystery events, you'd either have to hear about it through magazines, see it on a poster in stores, read about it online, or just end up being at a GameStop at the right time. But for how it usually worked out for Kid Kotatsu was my mom would just come home randomly one day and she'd just drop the bomb on me that she would be like, Hey, did you know that there's a new Pokemon distribution event happening at GameStop right now and we could go right now? Um, yes mom, please take me to the new distribution event right now. I have never heard of this Pokemon before and now I need it immediately. Give me a call, mom. So, before Wi-Fi distribution events were really a thing, there was this peripheral device for the Game Boy Advance that Nintendo released called the e-reader. With the e-reader, you can practically distribute mystery events to yourself from the comfort of your own home by scanning cards to access new content. It was pretty much DLC before DLC was even a common thing for games. Granted, it wasn't anything like how we know DLC works today, or even remotely how Mystery Gift distributions functioned in later titles, but it was mostly stuff like new trainers to battle, some mini-games, and a few berries you normally weren't able to obtain. You could even scan your own Pokemon cards in the e-reader to add to your Pokedex. And that's freaking cool! The most interesting Mystery Gift that you could access via the e-reader was the Eon Ticket, which you could only get access to by scanning the physical card for it, and that was only obtainable in a specific issue of the Nintendo Power magazine. 
What the Eon Ticket would do was basically download a whole new event onto your game where you could visit this new location called the Southern Island, and you were able to encounter a Latios in Sapphire version or Latios in Ruby version and had the chance to capture it. Yeah, other than that, there wasn't really another e-reader event like that released in the US. Like, ever again. Nintendo was like, no more. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> but then this awesome person, I'm a Blissey, came along and decided to have an absolute brain blast. And they're like, how about I just make my own e-reader events that are custom and extra super duper cool? <laughs> they did that. <laughs> I'm a Blissey does a seriously awesome job explaining how it all works in their videos, so I went ahead and linked it down below if you want to check it out. It's seriously such a cool watch. They go into all the details about how it all works and stuff. Basically, I'm a Blissey was able to script brand new custom events for Ruby and Sapphire, which didn't originally have access to mystery gift events on the same level as Emerald and Fire Red and Leaf Green did. TLDR, they used the Eon Ticket event as a structure to do some awesome programming magic to create a custom Deoxys event that was recognized as legitimate by the game's code. It was only thanks to my good friend Matt, but you can call him Absol, that I even discovered this event. When we were at IkiCon together back in January, he brought his e-reader and the physical e-reader card for the Deoxys event, so I was able to download it onto my copies of Ruby and Sapphire. I'm totally here too. Oh, break it down. Break dance. Whoa. Oh, wait, wait. oh, 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 let's go. Now that I had the event on my games, it was time for me to make my way through Meteor Falls to discover where the elusive DNA Pokemon was hiding. After I explored through the extensive caverns, swam through pools of untouched pristine water, and surfed up a serene waterfall, I finally came across the depths of Meteor Falls and found the Pokemon from outer space, Deoxys. And now, it was finally time to shiny hunt it. Oh, we have a party. We have the illegal underground fighting ring. The dubstep loud dread really <laughs> threw me for a loop the first time yeah, I watched that. I was they like, did they really do that? <laughs> The Gengar looks awful. <gasps> Shiny Deoxys! What? The Gengar looks awful. <gasps> Shiny Deoxys! What? No, what? Oh my gosh! Oh my what? gosh, I'm pausing the movie. Let's go! What? what? Let's go! Are you freaking serious right now? <laughs> <laughs> what? Let's go! I can't so fast! Oh my god, this is real this life! Is huge! Oh my god! Shout out to Ryan Reynolds right now. Oh my god. Ryan gosh. Reynolds, Detective. Pikachu. This is so awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Miho is here to witness it. Oh Yes. <laughs> okay. This is crazy. Is this a, oh no, this isn't the Chungus file. Oh no. This is just regular gulpin. That is right. so cool looking. Seeing that oh, in Meteor God. Falls and Hoenn. That is this so, is so sick. awesome. Oh, he's sleeping. He's sleeping. Oh, shoot. I didn't actually test this out, so I don't know how much damage anything does. Oh my gosh. What is his catch rate? I'm googling dot coming right now. I think it's catch rate three, unfortunately. That's so bad. So I'm never catching this. Actually, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to master ball it. Oh my god. It's not even shaking. And he's awake now. Great. No, Gulpin died. Oh my god. Make sure you say yes to choose next Pokemon. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm not gonna mess this up. <laughs> Why is Lantern not at full health? What was I doing? <laughs> what were you cooking? <laughs> Dang, just nothing. This is scary, but this is so exciting. I'm so scared right <laughs> now. Okay. Dang, 1650 for Deoxys. That is so fast, actually. That is quick. I think you might have been one of the first people to ever hunt the e-reader Deoxys. Are you for real right Potentially. now? Potentially. Not a lot of people we, have set this up. Can... That's so cool. Oh my gosh, these, these Ultra Balls are doing nothing. I really wanted to get it in an Ultra Ball, though. It matches the color so well. 
I like how the the your dying health sound cuts out every yeah. time you're scrolling around the menu. <laughs> oh my gosh. So crazy. Finally the movie shiny happened. Yeah. Like, what, 20 movies in? Yeah, on Detective Pikachu, <laughs> the live action one. Like On Detective Pikachu of all movies. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Ryan Reynolds again. Shout out to Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> He's a real one. I'll be okay. Naruto. Naruto. Oh my god, it did the three shake fake! No! Triggered. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That's it! That's it! This is such an awesome shiny. It's such a good one. And like you can trade it to the different Gen 3 games that have a change form. Ooh, that's true. How do I, how's that, what does that even look like? It's weird. So like fi in Fire Red, it's always attack form. and Leaf Green, it's always defense. In Emerald, it's always speed. And in Ruby Sapphire, it's always normal. I call let's it! Go, yeah! Let's go, let's go! Give me Ultra Ball. <laughs> well, that's so yeah. sick. All I had to do was oh. talk about the oxes. Oh, wait, where's the shiny decks? Yeah, it's not in Gen 3, sadly. <laughs> I think I know what to name this. Reynold. Yeah, let's go! Shout out to Ryan Reynold. <laughs> Shout out to Ryan Reynold. I can't name it Ryan Reynold because there's not enough space. Dang. That is so insane. Oh, I'm saving immediately. Oh yes. my god. I'm gonna get my own. I think the last thing you said was Gengar looks so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, this version of Gengar sucks. Shiny! <laughs> Here it is, Reynold. <laughs> I'm gonna get mild. You're gonna get mild? It's gentle. I didn't I didn't have time to guess. Dang. I guess I also gave mild. <laughs> okay, normal spinda. Shiny Reynold. Let's go. Let's go. Alright, let's take a look at Deoxys, oh, sorry, I mean Reynold, in other Gen 3 games so we can check out its other awesome forms. Oh, it traded form! I mean, it changed form! After doing this event and actually catching Deoxys, I was able to gain a new understanding about this extraterrestrial Pokemon. Being able to actually read its dex entry in-game and use it in battle gave me a whole new appreciation for it. I was filled with this sense of childlike wonder, and the joy of being able to finally answer these questions I had growing up was the greatest reward for this journey. Other than, you know, getting a shiny Deoxys. But most importantly, I'd gotten to do something I'd wanted to do ever since I was a kid. I went to Veilstone City and I finally got to figure out what I had to do with those freaking meteorites, dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This Pokemon really encapsulates the excitement and adventure that the series provides, and what I love the most about Pokemon as a whole. It makes us ask questions, go out on adventures and explore, and use our imagination to picture a more interesting and inspiring world around us. The time I spent in these games changed the way I went about my daily life. I'd be sitting around in English class thinking to myself, what Pokemon should I bring to the meteorite site next? What part of the region should I explore next if I want to discover a rare Pokemon? And what kind of adventure can I go on with my friends to make the next day more exciting than the last? Pokemon changed my life when I first picked up my copy of Pokemon Ruby in 2006. And for the longest time, I usually kept my experiences to myself. So now, Pokemon changes my life again now that I've made this channel and I can share all my experiences with you guys. So, for the first and definitely not the last time, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!